thing that I saw. I did a devotion a few weeks ago that really God just laid it upon me. We do a devotion every Monday morning by telephone. People can call in and just listen to about a five-minute devotion. And I did one, and it was on transitioning. And it's not what I'm going to preach on, but this morning I, I noticed the transition from our physical, our lives as we do it out there, and all of a sudden I noticed that transition into the spiritual realm. Everybody starts concentrating on Jesus Christ. And it's so, so beautiful to see that. Uh, that to, you start feeling it. And you start leaving the election behind. You start leaving all that behind. And you start saying, you know, it's time to think about Jesus again. It's, it, it, it was so good. I've got a little different thing this morning. And again, like I say, it's a, it, it is a great honor. Uh, I, I'm, I'm visiting a lot of churches. Uh, so this is almost becoming my home church. I'm here more than I am a home church. So, but but uh, it, is, it is a good place. I got good people. You got some good people here. Uh, I tell you, uh, and I told Jonathan each time I visit him, and, and I'm serious with y'all, if I could take his place, I'd take his place. Uh, I love that man. I, I, wish, I wish I could take his place up there. Uh, he's, he, he had several bad, bad days there. He was in some Severe pain, and uh, the other night he was feeling a little bit better. So that made him, made him feel a little bit better. But when he was in pain, I was in pain. And I know y'all as a church, y'all are y'all y'all feeling the same thing. Uh, you just hate to see your pastor in in, in that position. Mm -hmm. But we tell people that the hellfire ministry is not the safest thing in the world, mm -hmm. and everybody thinks we're talking about the gang members beating us up or something. <laughs> no, we're on motorcycles, and that those things. I'm telling you, they're, they're, they're dangerous. They are dangerous. You, you just, one at, every, one, every week I get a report on somebody else who went down. So they're in, we're, in, we're in a ministry that Jonathan did exactly what he wanted to do. He, he, would, he wouldn't change a thing. He wouldn't change a thing. Let's go to prayer, and then I'm going to read some scripture. And uh, try to deliver what God wants me to deliver this morning. But let's pray. Father, in your holy name, God, I thank you for this church, God, this church body, Lord. Father, we see the power, God, even in the smallest man out here praying, God. This young man prayed. God, I could see that it was a fervent prayer, even from him. Father, we thank you for this church and the church body. Father, we just ask, Lord Jesus, today as, as I present the word, God, I know you presented it to me for me first. So, God, I just ask you that we can, we can take this, learn from it, God, to hear it in the name of Jesus, in your precious name. I want to read a, just a couple of scriptures. I'm going to put my glasses on because if I don't, uh, I may read page 3 instead of page 21. So, uh, and I won't preach long. Okay, but uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, we're going to start at uh, verse number 13. In 2 Corinthians 11, 13. And it says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And 14 says that, No marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be tra transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. They say, boy, he took that out of the middle of nowhere, and I didn't understand the word of it. Okay? <laughs> okay, we're going to try to explain that a little bit. But like I say, I visit a lot of churches, the hellfires. We visit a lot of churches all year long. And as I go to these churches, I, hear, I get the opportunity to hear the men and the women of that church uh, tell me about their church. And they're usually telling me with, with great passion of how wonderful that church is. And they may be talking about their pastor. They may be talking about the music. Uh, some of the soloists. Uh, and every once in a while they actually talk about how powerful Jesus is in there. But we... What the biggest thing is, a lot of times I leave there and I realize that I will never reach the spirituality plateau that they're on. You know, we, we do that sometimes. People come in, even though they're Christians, they haven't got quite what we have in our church. You know, our church has got a little bit more. Man, you just come here to get saved. And sometimes I leave a place and I feel like, man, I'm, unless I start becoming a member there, I'm going to go to hell. You know, that's, that's just, that church has got it together and no other church does. But i got news for you. Going from church to church, there's a lot of people, a 
a lot of people that's out there fighting hard for Jesus Christ. Yeah, uh, east side, I can tell y'all, y'all one of them, looking good, looking good. But uh, as they talk, I can say, you get this sense, and sometimes we give people that sense when we're talking about our church. Our churches up here, uh, the, the, the assemblies of God may talk about Baptists, Baptists may talk about assemblies, back and forth, the Methodists, you know, you know who's got the best, you know? Wrong, we don't need to be doing that. But, but sadly, and I mean way, way too many times, I, I can tell you, I've sat and listened to people outside the church and inside the church that are offended. They're disillusioned. They're frustrated. They're mad. They don't, they, they're just mad at the church, which is us. Okay, they're mad at us. They're mad at the pastor. They're mad at anything about God. They don't want to hear it anymore. And, 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 when I, when I say this, I was thinking about a guy I, I met in Bonifay. Now, I know most of the guys in here, you like to go to the coffee shop, go to D's, and sit and have coffee. And I, I, I do a lot of that. And I went over to Bonifay one day, and I walked in, and there was this uh, elderly man there, and very neat dressed. And I could tell he was a retired officer by what he had on his hat and what, on his shirt and all. He was a retired naval officer. So I thought, opportunity plus. So I just kind of went over there and said, hey, you mind if I join you? And he didn't have, have come on, have a seat, man. And we sat there, and I probably talked for 30 minutes about stuff I didn't have a clue about. I talked about cars. I talked about history. I, we, we talked about hunting, fishing, sports. We talked about football. I, I didn't have a clue what that man was talking about football because I don't know those quarterbacks and all that. But then all of a sudden, I, my purpose started coming in there. And I wanted to talk about Jesus. Because I, you know, I want to find out, are you saved? You know, I mean, this guy's elderly. You know, hey, come on, let's, let's get this going. Well, as soon as I brought up the name of Jesus Christ, whoa, straight from the pits of hell, the language came out. Ooh. And I mean, this man, this man didn't like what I was saying. I mean, he, he, he let it fly. Now, the normal thing would be to say, <laughs> excuse me, but I had a purpose. I wanted to try to win this man to the Lord. Especially now since he came across with that. But we sat there for a little while. I don't know if it ever reached him or not. But he did since he had brought that up. That it offended him so much. We did get to discuss the gospel of Jesus Christ. It was an argument. But we did get to discuss it. And he, and he heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's just one of the methods. Through an argument with a guy cussing me every other breath. But... It's, it's real obvious that the disbelief in God, this disillusionment with the church, yeah. it has brought a hopelessness to people outside the church. It's brought a hopelessness to some, to some of the people in the church. I mean, you can go to churches, and there's somebody that attends every service, Sunday night, morning, comes on Wednesday night, goes to special prayer meeting, and they're still got this feeling of hopelessness in, in them. And I tell you, as, as I go through, as I'm speaking to these people, sometimes, man, it, 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 it really gets to you. It starts breaking your heart because you're talking to somebody who, who knows all the right words. They've heard them. They read them. But they still seem to have that hopelessness. But I can tell you, on the, on the reverse side, Jesus Christ, every time I meet one of those and I start feeling a little bit down, the joy of the Lord is there. It's there to lift me back up so I don't have that. But... but what I want to bring to the big question and the message of today is why. Why? Why do some of the people that we talk to, and I, I, I will say I or we, but some of the people we talk to, they have no problem talking to you at a coffee shop or, or outside the church or, or downtown. You can talk about the politics. You can talk about sports, cars, hunting, fishing. You, their niece, their nephews, talk about all of you all you want to. But when we talk about Jesus Christ, when we start bringing up the gospel, all of a sudden, there's a wall that goes up. And have y'all have ever had that experience? You're talking to somebody and everything, everything's fine. And their whole countenance changed when you bring up the name of Jesus. You know, you walk into a restaurant, uh, go into D's and say, hey, glory to God, Jesus is good. And you see everybody's, you know, I mean, you get their attention. You want to break up a wild party, just walk in and say, hey, let's talk about Jesus. <laughs> yeah. 
Amen. It up really quick. But I believe there's several reasons, several reasons uh, why they, they get this way. And, and I'm not going to try to talk about all of them, I promise. But, but I've learned, first of all, first and foremost, we need to learn this. When you start seeing a problem or talking to somebody about Jesus Christ, check yourself. Check yourself. Because a, a lot of the problems that, that I find in other people, it's usually me. It, it, I'm, I'm the one that's the problem. Uh, they may have a problem with my long hair. They may have a problem with the way I wear it. They may even wait, don't, don't like the fact that I'm from Florida. That may be me. So, so don't, you know, don't, don't put them on guard right yet. You know, check yourself out. See what your life's like. They may have heard things about you that you don't even know about. So, so sometimes we have to look at that. But in those scriptures in 2 Corinthians 11, uh, and, and I, I just want to remind you what it says, because I, I think about these scriptures, and who is it talking about? It says, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers. Workers in the church? This is talking about church people. They're transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel for Satan himself transformed himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Talking about ministers, talking about us, the people inside the church, transforming themselves. <clears throat> he don't talk about Christ transformed. He's talking about the ones that transform themselves. Now you say, what in the world are you talking about? Now, first of all, let me explain. I'm not talking about anybody in here. I'm not talking about you, okay? I'm talking about those other groups that don't come to this church. So, so nobody, don't get offended. Don't, don't, I'm not attacking you. I'm talking about all of other people. None of us will fit this today. Okay, but can you imagine how sick God gets of, the, of, of, of some activities inside the church? Some things outside the church, he, he, he understands. But inside the church, he has a hard problem. If the church, if Brother Jonathan put a machine up here, right under that clock back there, and, he, and, and as you walked in, as you walk into church, up here on this screen, Brother Brock's got it set. So as you walk in, it's reading your thoughts from the parking lot all the way in. Okay? And, and, and as you walk in, you see Sister So-and-so, boom, and your fault goes up there. Oh, what's she doing here? Good, she has no right. Look at her. You know, and, and all these thoughts start coming. I mean, woo! I mean, how many people would actually come in then? They'd be coming in the other doors, like me. I'd, I'd be sneaking in the north, another door. But you'd probably see, and I'd say I'm not talking about any of it, but you may see a husband and a wife that argued all the way to church. All the way to church. They fussed and fought all the way to church. And then they get out of church, and here's what happens. The first person from the church they see, How you doing, brother? Hey, God. Yeah. They're transforming themselves. <laughs> They're transforming. Hey, brother, you know. Now, he's been yelling at his wife, or she's been yelling at him, yelling at the kids. Yes, I'm going in there to tell the kids all about love. I, I'm just, oh, I just, I tell you what, y'all just don't know how God has blessed me this week. Let me, five minutes before, woo, it shows up on there. Or you may have somebody in the church that's doing things they're not supposed to do. Okay? But they come in here and again, when they get out of their car, they become a Christian. All of a sudden, they, they, they got a new life going for them. You may see a husband, and I won't say a husband because I, I think too many wives do this. But a husband that's been yelling like crazy, hurry! We gotta get there. Get dressed. Put your... You don't have to put all that stuff on. Come on. Let's go. And then the first person you meet at church, hi. Oh yes, me and my wife, we love each other. We've been married, you know. Yeah. I think that's called transforming yourself. That's what the scripture's talking about. We transform. Now, it's that group. Not anybody in here. I know nobody in here has ever done that. Nobody. Okay? But there is a problem. There's a problem in the church today. Because we're seeing the larger percentage of the people in the church, we're beginning to want what they have out there. 
outside the church. We're wanting that. And we're seeing a larger percentage that way than we are seeing the percentage out there that wants what we have. I mean, you go around, there's not too many people that you say, hey man, you need to come back. I, I don't need it. Why? Why don't they want what you have here at Eastside Baptist? What, what would possibly stop them? Well, again, I, I asked a question. I got a couple answers for you. I will try anyway. Okay? I think sometimes that group, that group, they have seen us after church. They've seen us go to the restaurants and immediately act like that waitress should recognize who we are because we're dressed in the finest clothes. We're church people, so wait on us quick. I don't care if everybody showed up at 1230 and the place is packed. Bring me my tea. I'm tired of waiting for it. And we act just that way. I, I, I'm telling you, I, I eat with people. Some of the hellfighters, they get impatient with waitresses. You know, and, and you, she comes over there and she says, I'm sorry, sir, they, they, they messed up your meal. What do I get, half price in? Come on, girl, what, what, what is with this place? I, I'll never come here. And that's the way we act. That group has seen that Christian group come. Some of the waitresses, if you ask them, the, the day they hate to work is Sunday afternoon when the church people come in because we are some of the rudest acting people. And the worst thing you can do, please, if you have some hellfighter tracks and you go in there and you've been impatient and you don't want to leave a tip, don't leave them a track. Don't leave them a hellfighter track. Hey, I'll give you a tip. Get you another job. No. No, please don't do that. You know, you can, that's one time, don't hand out our tracks. You know, if you got, if you got something out in your pocket other than that, but these girls work hard. Some of them, yeah, some of them are bad. So what? So are we. You know, I, I, I can't say that I always do the perfect job and everything. They don't either. So leave them a tip anyway. That's what they work for. That's where they're there. And you might have called them where a day where they just found out some of the worst news in the world. Their mind's not on their job. And I have talked to some. We've prayed with a lot of waitresses. And sometimes you'll find, uh, and I will give you this one example. I went over to Crestview to meet another motorcycle minister. Okay, I go over there. And me, in fact, it was me and Troy sat there 30 minutes waiting on that guy. Man, I was getting impatient. Late, lady bring us tea. We weren't going to order. But he comes in, he sits down, and the waitress comes, and I'm thinking, yep, yeah, if he has to wait like we waited, he, he's going to get mad. He comes in, and the guy says, ma'am, is there a problem? Can we pray with you about something? And she just started bawling. She just started bawling. She started telling me about her children that have a disease she's adopted and she's had to work two or three jobs all her life and it's just getting to her. Her husband just lost his job. I'm sitting there thinking, 30 minutes I've sat here and I didn't, I didn't even think about that waitress. This guy walks in and in two minutes he discerned there was a problem. Sometimes we do that. Sometimes those waitresses do have, do have problems. Now, some of that group at one time or another might have been part of this church or part of my church, or part of another church. And they put on that fake smile. They, when they got there, they didn't live it, but they put on that fake smile. And they got before that Sunday school class and did that lesson and talked all about love, and they walked out the door. Yeah, stupid. Yeah. You know, and they figure, you know what? They figure everybody else is maybe the same way. So no, they don't want to come to church anymore because they figure it's all, everybody's just like them. It, you know, it's all just a facade. It's just not, it's not real. There's not, and, and what it is, we're judging each other. You know, a thing we're not supposed to do, judging each other, sometimes we do that. But you, we're talking again, not any of us, we're talk, talking about that group. They, we transform ourselves from what we are out there to what the church is expecting of us. Now, the church expects you to come in here and smile. I, I, I mean, I, I've never been to a church where somebody just sat there and went, get away from me. You know, everybody's always friendly. Yeah, I do it and all that. I don't know what they say once we leave. Now, I know a few churches that 
when the Hellfighters came in, we all sat on this side, the whole church moved to that side. <laughs> I got I got a feeling that they might have said a few things after we left, like, who were them guys? You know. But we have to realize that, that the Bible's talking about us as ministers, us as Sunday school teachers. We can't live it Sunday morning, Sunday evening. If we want to win the world, if we want to reach them, there, there's a, 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 a liability, a responsibility for us to live it all the time. This church right here, I come in here, y'all are always friendly. I don't know how y'all are after we leave or to each other, but, you know, if I could see, like I say, if it started coming in and we have a grudge against this one or we got a grudge against that one, and you come in and you bring that spirit into this church... You're bringing it to the cross. Bring it to the cross. Lay it down. Get rid of it. Because that's the very thing that the people that I deal with a lot, that come to our meetings, that, that we meet on the street, they're disillusioned with a church thing. Because they've seen us be church things so much. We're not real to them. They, they'll tell you, the, the worst motorcycle gang out there will tell you they like to hang around Christians. They really do. As long as they know they're real Christians, they like to hang around us. They'll, they'll tell you that in a heartbeat. They get sick, like anybody else, they get sick of somebody's faith. And the problem with them is they check it out. If you, if you start hanging with them, they're going to find out if you're a real They're going to push you. They're going to push you and try to find out. But the biggest thing is that, that how do we transform ourselves to righteousness? How, do we, how are we transforming ourselves to what God wants? We can't. I tried for years and years and years to transform myself. Okay, I, I, I knew what I was doing wrong, and I'd say, I'm going to this altar. Lord, I, I, I promise you. I, I, I mean, I'd kneel and say, Lord, I promise you, next, next week, I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna live for you. I promise you, I won't do that again. And Monday afternoon, I'd be pushing the limit, and all of a sudden, there I am again. Caught up in that same nonsense. You know, and, and we do that. But what happens is we get so busy. Life itself gets us so busy. We don't have time to stop and let God do the transfer. <laughs> the renewing of our minds. It says renew your mind. Renew. I mean, hey, there, there's all kinds of scriptures that tell us what to do. Being transformed. Okay, by the renewing of your mind. At, renew means to make like new. In other words, I'm not the old self. That dying to yourself, that's what it's talking about. I am renewed in the spirit. Now, if I renewed myself, that, that's just a, more fake. I'm still who I was. But God sent Christ to come into our lives and change us by renewing our minds, our thoughts. But our problem is, we, we, we come down here and we've got two minutes we're going to pray for two minutes. We're going to pray for three minutes. That's it. We don't give God a chance to do the complete work in us. I did. I'm talking, and I'm talking to y'all from experience. Okay? For years, I was so busy. I was happy. I mean, I worked. I was transformed every Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. I, man, I worked for the Lord. I had so many jobs in the church that I really didn't have time for God to bother me. You know, God, <laughs> look... God, look, I've got to prepare this lesson, I've got to prepare this lesson, and I've got the Royal Rangers, I've got, you know, uh, I've got to go over to the district office and work for them for a while, then come to church and work for a while, and then I have my job. So the thought of taking some time and allowing God to do the transforming, it just didn't fit into my schedule. And for years, I suffered because of it, because I, could, I would do it. I mean, really, I was earnest when I'd go to the altar. Please, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I'm living for you. But I kept saying, I, I, I had too much I in it. This morning, what I'm going to ask you to do is, is and, and the title of this would be mirror. Look at yourself. Look at yourself. Examine yourself. Do you have to put on a smile, or is that smile here? Because if the smile comes from here, you don't even have to worry about it. It comes there. And if somebody comes up to you and says something to you, if the smile comes from here, you'll get over it. If somebody tries to offend you, if the devil tries to attack you, and he will attack you through Christians, through pastors, through your friends, through your relatives, 
if he tries to attack you, are, are you are you happy enough inside that you can just, you know, not laugh at all, but get over it? Little skin, skin marks. Can I get over that? This morning, examine yourself. Where, 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 how did you get renewed? Were you renewed through, you said some words, and from that point on, you said, from now on, I am not going to do this or that anymore. I am not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I am going to do this. And, and you've got your own guidelines. Or did you allow Jesus Christ to come in and totally wash away everything there was in the past that, that Satan would try to use against you. Wash it all away so it don't exist anymore and start serving him in every capacity that you can. Because that's the renewing of the mind. I promise you, the new mind of Richard Burke that happened in 2006, it, it wasn't the same guy that went to church all those years. When, it, when he changed me, I, I knew that old Richard Burke was dead. My old thoughts were gone. I mean, the, the thoughts of, oh, man, I, I, the, even the thought of I've got to go to church every Sunday morning, Sunday evening, if they have a special revival, Monday through Thursday, i got to go. And boy, if, because I had to impress people. Even those thoughts are gone. I come to church, uh, and I think Michael, Michael was mentioning it this morning, you know, and, and during the songs and all, if you, came, if you came here just to impress people on your Christianity, if you came here just to receive, if you just came and said, look, I just want to come there and get a blessing and hear a good sermon, but if you came here to worship at the foot of the cross, you came for the right reason. You came for the right reason. And then God can come in and renew your mind. We can transition from that physical to the spiritual. And the best part about it, through Jesus Christ, we can stay in the spiritual. We can stay in that spiritual. And you can live that spiritual if you allow Jesus to renew you. To renew your mind. We're going we're to pray. And I'm, I'm going to close out with prayer. And as I'm praying, I want you to examine your own mind, your own heart, okay, and, and, and you just pray right where you're at. If you, have, if, you, if you feel like, man, you still struggle with the old self, allow Jesus to come in this morning, and, and, and I'm serious, this cross is so important to me. Not just this cross, the cross of Jesus is so important. Heaven's a wonderful place. Heaven is just Man, it's just the splendor we can't even, we can't explain it. But what I fear is hell for people. As much as we talk about heaven being the most wonderful place, hell is the most awful place. And there's people that go to church today, every day. There's people that go to churches everywhere. There's people that claim that I, I, I'm a Christian, and they're going to, they find themselves in hell. I, I do not want to be one of those that allow that to happen if I can stop. If I can, if I can speak a word that lets somebody pray the right prayer, and they can be renewed through Jesus Christ, not on their own. You can't do it on your own. I tried for 40 years, I tried. Trying to be that Christian that everybody was expecting. I couldn't do it. And then just a few minutes at an altar, a few minutes at an altar, and Jesus Christ came in so deep and so strong. Just, I mean, that, that mighty wind, oh, it was wonderful. And I got up from there. I can tell you, that, that, that weight that was on me for years, it was gone. And it did not come back through Jesus Christ. So this morning, y'all pray with me. And y'all, if y'all have something, let's get rid of it this morning. Let's ask God to come in and renew our minds. Y'all pray with me, if you will. Father, this morning, God, I, I bow to you, Lord. Father, I just ask this morning, God, as we, as we close out this service, God, if there's something in our minds, Lord, God, if it's just us, Father, this morning we ask you to come into our hearts. Father, we just ask you to change us, Lord Jesus. God, renew us, Lord. Father, it says daily, daily, daily do this. Father, we love you and we praise you, God. We're trying. We, sometimes we don't understand it all. But, Father, we got a good group, Lord Jesus. But, Lord, we know we're not good unless you're in us. Father, we can put on the fakes. We can put on the smiles. 
We can do all kinds of things, but Lord, people are getting hurt. People are getting hurt because they see the real us. God, let the real us be you. Be you. God, let our reflection reflect you. In the name of Jesus, Father, we ask this. God, that Jesus come into everybody's heart. God, I said this morning, Lord Jesus, help me to just get rid of all the, all the ugly. All the ugly. And put all the beauty of Jesus Christ so that I can love people. That I can love people. Amen. I want to finish with this one scripture. John 13, 35. It says this. By this all will know that you were my disciples if you have love one for another. If you have love one for another. Folks, we've heard the scriptures for years. Some of us for a lot of years. We've heard those scriptures. They do us absolutely no good unless we can apply them. If you hear the scriptures and you say, that's really good, that's really good, but you don't start applying them, I'm sorry, they're to no avail. They're to no avail. He tells us to love one another. I told, I told the hellfighters yesterday we had a meeting, and I told them the most important thing in the world that I can think of is love. You think of Hillary and Trump, if they'd have been an ounce of love, if they had really loved each other as Christians love, could they have ever said that kind of stuff? Would the arguments have ever reached the state they did? Would our nation be like it was at turmoil? Love. If you got a brother that's really treating you wrong and you really have that love, retaliation is not the name of the game. It's love. You're going to love them. You're going to love them right at it. Amen. I thank you.